to be afraid of how much they love me. Matt Scraby wraps up a full day of live and local sports talk. And that is the whole problem with aliens. You just can't trust them. Occasionally you meet a nice one, but usually they turn out to be some kind of big lizard. The Scraby Show starts now on 97.3 The Fan. Hello and welcome into the Scraby Show for March 27th, 2024. I am Matt Scraby. Thank you for joining me. We have the we're on opening day eve here on 97.3 The Fan. Hopefully all of you are as excited about opening well home opener as we all are because we're tired of uh we're tired of doing the whole spring training thing. I think everybody's tired of doing the whole spring training thing. It just doesn't uh it doesn't hit the same when you're watching spring training games. And Chris kind of alluded to it a little bit during the show, but he said it just seems so weird that they've already played two games and uh then they kind of then they took a week off and now they're back to it and I know it's not that big of a deal or a big of a concept, but it does feel very very strange and uh but tomorrow we'll get back on some sort of normal baseball schedule we'll basically have baseball every day for the next three four five months and i am very excited about that uh let's go to the uh, chat real quick we have welsh fryer staying up in in uh wales right now with us thank you very much he's a very big padre fan dominic is here castro is here alan is here jacob is here for our phil wow for our phil making an appearance into the chat he said it does feel strange as well about the padres and the korea and all that stuff bob says i hate the off season <clears throat> i don't hate the off season but because like let me just tell you after a long season of padres baseball we are ready for the season to be over. I'm just going to speak for myself. I'm ready for the season to be over when we get to the end and, and everything because it's a grind. And it's, you know, I'm not playing or anything like that, but it's still a grind on the radio side. We still have to do things every single day. And sometimes things are more difficult than other times. But uh, it's something that I'm ready for to end when it does end. But then I miss it like a month later and I'm ready to, for it to be back. And then spring training comes around. I get excited again. And then I'm done with that after like two days of spring training and then I'm ready for the real season. But Padres right now are one and one, everybody. No team right now currently is going 162 and 0. As much as Major League Baseball wants the Dodgers to go 162 and 0, they are not gonna do it because the Padres took the game in game two 15 to 11 uh we got you know just kind of a fun show tonight on opening day eve or home opener eve if you want to make any crazy Padres predictions you uh should put that in the chat on YouTube if you want to watch the show you can at on YouTube just search 97.3 the fan also go to Facebook or Twitch or x 97.3 the fan SD Annabelle says driving carpool. Woo. I've actually talked to a few people because I've, I've asked people about how they are able to do the YouTube thing while they're you know, commuting or while they're not able to actually sit down and watch because I'm not necessarily a guy who's going to sit down and watch, like stare at the screen for the whole show. But I am a guy who puts stuff on in the background. And that is how I have been finding that people are listening to listening slash watching the show because they're able to while they're driving, they can put it on and it will play through the speakers and they just won't watch the, the YouTube feed. They'll just listen through the YouTube feed. So I appreciate everybody who goes that extra mile and I appreciate everybody who is uh, you know willing to do that to watch our shows here on YouTube. Ken says surprise, silently the Padres are going to surprise the league. Welsh Friar says Jake Cronenworth is going to bounce back from his glove mishap and win the uh, first base golden glove. Do I know what the over under for the season is? I think it was 87 and a half. Let me just go make sure real quick before I give a number. Um, because we were talking about it a little bit earlier and I was at the dog park and someone, one of the guys at the dog park said that the Padres are going to have 96 wins and anything else is a disappointment. And I said, prepare to be disappointed, sir, because 96 wins is good for any team. And I don't know that they're going to win 96 games. But more of the people at the dog park were thinking around 87, maybe 89, 90. Uh, according to this this betting website, the Padres are over under 83 and a half wins on the season. So 
I uh, I'm not really 83 and a half seems a little low for me. I said at the dog park, I said like 87, 88, 89, somewhere in that range. I think I basically picked 88 this morning. 88 still a lot of wins, still a lot of wins. And I, I believe that they can do it. I really do. I have a different feel about this team this year. I also had a different feel about this team last year. And we all know what happened last year. But last year is last year. Last year is behind us. All that good stuff. Uh, let's see. Joe Gary Gariani says, Jackson Merrill will be the starting center fielder for the National League in the All-Star game. That's awesome. Let's see. Friar Phil says, Padres have to extend Hassan Kim, in my opinion. He's too beloved by the fans. If things go well, maybe we can hit 90. Uh, let's see. Jackson Merrill, again, another prediction, rookie of the year. Kevin says, Cease Cy Young, Tatis MVP, Merrill, rookie of the year. Man, we have some really positive fans in the audience, and I am very excited for that because I'm positive too. So we're right here, all positive together. Uh, Katrina says, hello. Oh, you are now in the chat. Thank you very much. Martin is there. And McKee says, Merrill, first home run opening series, which would be nice. I mean, he almost had one against the Dodgers. Hit off the top of the wall. Hassan Kim, an all-star. Let me go back to what Friar Phil said real quick, and it would be Padres have to extend Hassan Kim, in my opinion. He's too beloved by the fans. If uh, things go well, they hit 90 wins. I mean, I know that Hassan Kim is beloved by the fans, but I'm not sure. I think, I unfortunately think he's going to command a lot of money. It all really depends on what he does this year. Each year he's gotten better. So I have no other uh, way to think about this, except for that I think he's going to get better this year and he's going to be very expensive. That's what happens when you get guys and they get as good as they are and then they leave the team because they work themselves out of it. They work themselves out of that pay range. So I guess I would be happy if Hassan Kim got the bag, as Tony would say, here in San Diego. I mean, I wouldn't guess I would be happy. I'd be very happy. I also want to see him do it again this year. I know that Chris and Tony both said that, but I, I, I'm i with them on this because he has, as I said, gotten better each year. But is he going to get is he going to be a major impact piece this year? And I think he has the capability of being a major impact piece to this. And I just hope that he does it this year because that would be a, that would be great for the Padres. It'd be great for everyone. They need that one guy. That's not Xander Bogarts. That's not Manny Machado. That's not Fernando Tatis Jr. That's not Jake Cronenworth. Jake Cronenworth has his own work to do in, in that right. But they need someone to step up big. And I think it may be Hassan Kim. And if it is Hassan Kim, he's gonna get he's gonna become a very, very, very rich man in the offseason. Maybe they can uh, defer some money to 2092. And I'll tell you why I just brought that up in just a second. It's time to get caught up on the latest with the news of the day. All right. I say the whole deferral of money thing because we uh, talked about this a little bit earlier. But Will Smith, catcher for the Dodgers, has agreed to a 10-year extension with the team. Now, it's going to be 10 years and $140 million. He's actually going to... So he's going to take $400,000 as a base pay for a lot of the contract. And then he's going to get paid out the rest of it later on. But he is going to get a $30 million signing bonus. So he's going to receive $15 million of that signing bonus in November 2024. And the other $15 million in January of 2025. So that's a good couple months that's a 30 million dollar two months for will smith man i can't even I'm, I'm sitting here honestly reading these numbers i have no idea what it would feel like to receive 15 million dollars in my bank account one day and and just two months later get another 15 million dollars that is just insane that is really insane uh but yeah so that is what the dodgers did and here's the payout uh, for the deferred part, he's going to be paid out five million dollars per season between 2034 and 2043, which honestly it does. It, it that kind of structure does speak to me 
because I would much rather like I think I I think I said this a couple maybe a month or two ago, but it's like finding extra money. And in the like it's like when you go do your laundry and you find 20 bucks in your pocket and you're really pumped about it because you didn't think you had 20 bucks in your pocket. But instead Will Smith is going to have 5 million dollars in his pocket every single year. I mean the structure again, I like the structure. It makes sense for some guys to do this. But it seems and I know that the I'm not going to call the Dodgers cheaters because they're doing things that are within the rules of Major League Baseball. It's just very it's just very um what's the word? It's just annoying. And that's the word. It's annoying. I'm just over it because they have guys like Teoscar Hernandez. He's he's deferring a small amount of money. We all know about Shohei Otani. I don't think Yamamoto is deferring any money. But anyway, I understand the concept. But I don't know. It seems it, it, it does seem like it's kind of sort of getting around the whole luxury tax thing. Even though they are being charged with luxury tax hits, still seems like they're getting around it a little bit. Uh, all right. Next news story for the day. Where did my doc go? My doc just deleted. Okay. So we're going to just go. So we're just going to go off the cuff here because my doc just deleted and I'm going to have to get it back. But we did talk about Jordan Montgomery last night and him being a part of the team. And the more I think about it, the more bummed I am about it because the Diamondbacks, I thought about this a lot last night because. I, I I guess I thought about this in this way. The NL West, I'm trying to figure out how to say this in the best way without seeming like I'm whining, like I often do come off seeming like I'm whining. But the NL West right now is definitely, in my opinion, the best division in baseball. And everybody is going into the National League West to, to um, play. And to compete with the Dodgers and to compete with the the Padres. Yesterday, I had some people on the chat saying that they're not afraid of the Diamondbacks. I'm not necessarily afraid of the Diamondbacks, but I don't know that we could just turn our cheek on them, turn our head to them, because I think that they're much more important to everything, or they're much better than people give them credit for. They just went to the World Series made their way through the they won the national league pennant they added some guys so it just is annoying to me because you can kind of think okay the diamondbacks are a good team this is pre jordan montgomery diamondbacks are a good team and uh you know the padres could still finish ahead of them in the standings and jordan montgomery may not change everything but then they get jordan montgomery and you're thinking this is just one of those things where we're going to be playing a good team every time we go out and play a game. They have to play against all these National League West teams. The only team that's not trying is the Rockies. But anyway, I keep saying anyway because I am really trying, honestly, not trying to complain. But it's very hard for me not to complain because things are going against the Padres. Final news story of the day. The Yankees made a trade. It's actually a three-team trade. And it was going to send John Birdie from the Marlins to the Yankees. Um, the Yankees shipped catcher Ben Rortvet to the Rays while shipping the Rays shipped outfielder John Cruz, the Yankee, or I'm sorry, they shipped Ben Rortvet to the Rays. Then John Cruz went also to the Rays. And then the Rays outfield prospect Shane Sasaki, he is going to the Marlins. So a lot of movement there, three team trade. DJ LeMahieu recovers from a bone bruise in his right foot, so that's why the Yankees went out and got birdie. But uh, I saw a couple guys on the chat saying that they wanted to have John Birdie on the Padres. But, I mean, I, I've never heard of any of those prospects. John Cruz apparently is the number 28 prospect, but you could probably have gotten birdie. I guess so. This seems like one of those necessity-type trades try to fill a spot because DJ LeMay, was hurt. And so they got to go find a guy who's good, but he's not great. And he's not going to cost a lot, which is what John Birdie is. All right. Matt Scraby here. 97.3, the fan, the Scraby show opening day Eve. I don't know if anybody's got huge plans tomorrow, but we're going to be on the station. We're going to be down at Baja Rick's Cantina 
And it's going to start at 6 a.m. with Ben and Woods. They're going to be going until 10 a.m. Then you have Annie and Elston from 10 a.m. to noon. And then you have Sammy Lev taking over for the pregame show. Then you got the game. Then you got the postgame show. And then you got Chris and I. Because we are going to be on from after Sammy Lev and his postgame show all the way through 8. So we're hoping that the Aztecs win their game against UConn tomorrow. And uh, if you want to see Chris sweat during a game, you're going to want to see him sweat watching the Aztecs game on YouTube. Just search 97 through the fan. More crazy predictions on the way. If you have any crazy predictions, please let me know on the chat or on Twitter at Matt Scraby. And uh, no, I guess keep the predictions within the realm of possibility. None of these uh, Fernando's going to hit 90 home runs, 50 home runs. I'll take. 90 he's not gonna hit 90 home runs so we'll talk more about the padres when we get back here on the scraby show on 97.3 the fan follow 97 
Gravy, back with you here in the Odyssey Palace on 97.3 The Fan. Thanks, everybody, for joining me today. Opening day Eve, home opener Eve. Really excited about tomorrow. I'm going to be down there a little bit early, going to Baja Ricks and saying hi to everyone there, and then uh, walking around the stadium. I'm going to take in the sights and sounds of opening day, home opener day. If you would like to, if you see me walking around aimlessly like I usually do, feel free to stop me because uh, I usually am staring at the ground. And if you do come across me and I'm super awkward, I'm sorry. I am an awkward person in, in, in person. I may seem like I like to talk and I may seem like I'm a very uh, outgoing person, which to a certain extent I am. But when it's meeting new people, I am not good at it and I've never been good at it. So I may act a little strange uh, and it's just going to be normal. So if you do see me walking around the park, feel free to call out my name or something. I'm the only Scraby that's probably going to be there. I mean, I'm thinking no one else in my family is going to be there. So I'll be the only Scraby there. If you want to join us on the YouTube, you can go to ser- or go to YouTube and search 97.3 The Fan. Also, uh, you can watch on X 97.3 The Fan SD. We got some chats I'm going to go through. And we'll, we'll see if there's any uh, good suggestions in there. And Welsh Friar is asking, how many games are you planning on going to this season, Scraby? Well, last year, I think, see, I I don't like necessarily talking about this because I get in for free because I am going there to do work. I'm not just going there just to hang out and, you know, eat hot dogs and all that stuff. I'm in the booth. I'm usually doing something while I'm there. But last year, I think I went to maybe 20 games, I think, around. And guess what? Because I'm kind of a dork in this way but i keep track of some of the stats that i have and trent grisham was the best performing padre in all of those games that i went to last year i know i'm a dork but i think it's fun to kind of know those numbers and who was the best player while i attended games this year well trent grisham trent grisham was the was the guy last year for me. Actually, I think I might be able to go find some of these numbers. That That's actually going to be kind of fun. But Trent Grisham, I mean, I must have gone to the only great games that he played last year because lots of struggles last year. In the next segment, I'm going to tell you why Scott Boris took an L this offseason, and I have my daily gripe. But right now, we're going to be talking Padres. Right now, we're going to be Go into the chat because we got some good questions in there and comments and statements and predictions. Uh, Beckham Home Loans on YouTube says, as a lifelong Rangers fan, Padres are my next favorite, and I would love to see Montgomery here. That could happen. He only signed a one-year deal with the Diamondbacks, and he also has like a vesting option. So it could happen after this year. You never know. Never know about that. Thank you, Beckham. Uh, M. McKee 23 says, Kim, better not go to the Doyers. That would be criminal. Honestly, I don't think the Doyers, well, Doyers would want him. I'm going to take that back because they would want him. But I don't know that Hassan Kim would want to go up there. I'm just going to take that. I'm just going to say that that's the truth. Hassan Kim did not does not want to be a Dodger, so he won't be a Dodger. Maria says, um, I wonder if Bomel would get booed when they announce the lineup tomorrow. We've kind of talked about this leading up to everything this week and last week. And you know, the funny thing about booing is we've taken a poll before on whether or not you're going to boo a player. And I guess this is slightly different because Eric Cosmer was here in town. He wasn't, he never returned. I don't believe as a member of the opposing team, I may be forgetting something, but I heard a lot of people were going to boo him, even when he was on the team, and I never heard anyone boo him. So I'm not real sure if uh, Bo Mel's actually going to get booed tomorrow, or if Blake Snell's going to get booed. I don't think so. I don't. I don't think Blake Snell is going to get booed. But you never know. And if you do boo him, who cares? It's uh, you're a Padres fan. You're in your stadium. They are not Padres anymore. Anthony says Kim going to get paid big time, no doubt. I think it's true, and I think it's dangerous. Lance says, and I think it's dangerous because he's going to make a lot of money. Hassan Kim became a big star when Tatis was out for the season. It helped Kim and the uh, Padres on this everyday player. Kim deserves big money. It's a good point, Lance. He did become a big star when Tatis was out for the season. So when we first found out that Fernando was not going to be uh, 
with the team to begin the year. I think it was 2022. And we first found that out. There was a lot of questions. Who in the world is going to play shortstop? Because yes, Fernando still played shortstop back then. It's kind of crazy to think about it now, but Fernando has played shortstop for the Padres a lot, but I think he's better in right field. And I think he proved it last year and having a good right fielder who's able to gun guys down at the plate is very dangerous. Welsh Friar says Tyler Wade is going to have a great year, batting plus 250 and cementing himself as the year-long Padres DH. I hope you're right, Welsh Friar, because the Padres DH situation, outside of Manny Machado, is not great at the moment, in my opinion. I think that they have some guys that they could throw out there, but I don't know that they have an everyday guy right now. So that job is up for the taking. And... I guess I don't necessarily, uh, you know, just because they're a young player doesn't mean they can't be the DH, but I feel like DH is a position that comes with being in, being in baseball for a long time and being able to work different pitchers, being able to, you know, just kind of be a professional hitter. And so I'm not necessarily thinking that younger players with less experience are best for the DH spot, but the Padres don't really have a choice at some points. And Tyler Wade will have to be the DH as Manny Machado goes back to third base. Uh, let's go. Dan says Nando 40 40 club this year. That would be nice. That would be really nice. And I think he can do it. I think he's pr uh, proven that he can do it. He played 20 less games last year and he still had stats that were on par with guys who played over 150 games. So last year, during the 2023 regular season, he stole th uh, 29 bases in, it doesn't tell me how many games, but he stole 29 bases in 141 games. So he can get 11 more. And I feel like he's, he's going to run a lot more this year, but I think he can get 11 more, get to 40. His highest home run total of his career, 2021, 42 home runs for Fernando Tatis Jr. So it's definitely a possibility that year he only stole 25 bases. It's definitely a possibility, but we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Now I'm looking at his uh, stats for 2024, and after that stat correction, he's now hitting 375 on the season. It's pretty good, I've got to say. Uh, Bob says, I think we're going to see the Padres steal bases a lot more. Oh, this is perfect timing. I think we're going to see the Padres steal bases a lot more this year, stretching singles into doubles and plus, uh, doubles and plus, going first to third, more running. I'm with you. Bob, I think we need to see them do more running. They're a quick team. They got guys that can steal bases. Hustlin Kim stole a bunch of bases last year. Fernando can steal bases. Jake Cronenworth doesn't necessarily steal bases, but I I've seen him do it before. He's quick. He can do it. I want to see them run more this year. I'm with you, Bob. Matthew Smith says, Padres should sign Bauer for the fifth starter and trade prospects for Jake McCarthy for left field. The Bauer thing, I don't I really just don't know what's going to happen. I, I I don't. It's not something that uh, it's not something I think the Padres are interested in doing. Now, what I do think with Trevor Bauer, what's going to happen is the year's going to get underway. And because we were talking, I was talking to Tony before he left, and I said, "How did he pitch over the weekend, Trevor Bauer?" And he said he was pitching really well. And I said, "Well, isn't it just a matter of time before a team picks him up because he is pitching well?" And he said he doesn't know, but my theory is that once the season gets underway and uh, teams, you know, experience of injury and they experience injury in the rotation, um, I think a team will bring them in and it might be an easier sell on a fan base to bring them in mid season and to replace someone who has been injured. I think it's easier for a fan base to buy that. I'm not saying it's going to be the Padres. No, I, I don't think it's going to be the Padres, but I can see a team definitely taking him in and getting him for cheap and just hoping and praying it works out. And I think it probably will work out, but long-term, I don't know if it works out long-term. Tap says, I don't know why he doesn't sign with Oakland. That's a good point, but I don't know if, uh, I don't know if he has ever been offered by the, the uh, A's. Really good point. Everybody, yeah, everybody's not happy with the uh, Bauer idea. I'm not saying that Bauer should be a, a Padre. I'm saying that I could see a team at some point 
I could see a team bringing him in this year because that's not something that getting a guy like who could pitch like Trevor Bauer for the price that he would cost is incredible. And it's going to be too juicy for all teams going to be juicy for a lot of teams. Annabelle, absolutely no way. (laughs) Dominic, we're sour on Bauer. Maria, no Bauer. Patrick and Annie, toxic addition. Now, I'm not disagreeing with anyone here, but I have read that people do like Trevor Bauer in the in the, the locker room. Now, I don't know. I wasn't there. But I want to bring up the other side just so I'm not seeming like I'm too one-sided here. Taps goes on to say about the A's, very low-key, owner doesn't care. Now, that is true. Also, it's like Luis, or not Luis, um, Julio Urias. He still doesn't have a team. But he's not going to be coming here to San Diego. He's still got stuff going on. So it's not, you know, I don't think that the Padres are looking for anyone else to really, unless there's some someone that falls right in their lap. I don't think the, the Padres are looking to add any big names to this team right now. It's going to have to all come down to injury. It's all going to have to come down to performance this year. And I don't think they're going to be going out to get Bauer or... Urias anytime soon. So we can not worry about that right now. All right. Next segment, I have proof, or at least in my mind, I have proof that Scott Boris took an L this offseason with his clients. Now, usually he is super agent extraordinaire, but I'm going to tell you kind of the uh the trend that happened over the offseason and why I think he took an L this this uh this offseason with his clients and that'll be all when we get back here on the Scraby show on 973 the fan Ben and Woods
Matt Scraby back with you. Odyssey Palace 97.3 The Fan. The Scraby Show. Only two more left before I start getting pushed for the Padres, which is fine because, you know, kind of need the Padres to do my job. I'm actually trying to change the channel here in studio because the on CBS Sports Network, the Cal State San Marcos Cougar basketball team, the women, are playing in the Final Four of the Division II championship for college. So I am looking for that right now so I can give a little bit of an update. And that's pretty cool. San Diego with another basketball team doing big things in, in uh, tournaments. So there you go. Cal, Cal State San Marcos at Minnesota State. And right now, Minnesota State leads 6-2. to two. So I'll keep you up to date there. Now, before we came back from uh, the commercial break, you heard Zach Gelb. You heard him talking about Caitlin Clark being offered $5 million by the big three and Ice Cube to join their league. And he said that he thinks, Zach Gelb basically said that he thinks the whole thing was maybe just a, a ploy to get some news. A ploy to maybe, I think Zach Gelb even used the word news cycle. And at first, my thought was, does Ice Cube really need does ice cube really need that much help but in this day and age yes i mean you could go anywhere and reach a bunch of people he was on with pat mcafee so he got to tell everybody that but it's uh i think it's a very 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 interesting move by ice cube in the big three i think it could work now will caitlin clark ever go for it i don't know but we were looking up the different uh, types of contracts that are in uh, the WNBA right now. The highest paid player, according to the cap, is around $260,000. So if you're looking at what Caitlin Clark's going to make, she's not going to, uh, going off of those contracts, she's not going to get a $5 million one year deal, which is what the big three is offering her. And I don't, and, and I know that the big three thinks that it's going to be, um, the big three is going to, it's going to be second fiddle to the WNBA, but they don't really care. And so maybe she should think about it. I'm sure she is thinking about it. The AAV on Elena Della Don's contract, which she's 30 years old. She signed for four years. She's a free agent this year, but she's currently the, according to AAV, the highest paid player in WNBA, $224,870. So that's, kind of crazy i gotta say like five million dollars is a lot her contract that she signed elena della don is only worth nine hundred thousand dollars which obviously is a lot of money it's life-changing money to many of us but for the for the top athlete in the WNBA to be paid under a million dollars caitlin clark has to think long and hard about this five million bucks that she could make from the big three i would watch it I really would off watch it. Annabelle says, yeah, didn't Dave Portnoy offer her $10 million? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Talk about, ugh, I don't want to go down this road because I know people are fans, but talk about a guy who just likes to jump on n trends and, and news stories. Like he might be able to offer her $10 million, but it's going to be some sort of joke. I'm, I'm sure it's like an intramural game. The big three is actually like a legit, it's actually like a, a, a real league. Now, I don't necessarily know all the details about Portnoy's league, but I don't know. Just not into it. Just not into it. Just just because someone makes news. I'm not just talking to Portnoy. Just because someone makes news doesn't mean you have to be a part of all of it. Like Antonio Brown. He's always a part of everything. And it gets a little old at times, but... Keep an eye on that Caitlin Clark story. All right. So you you can't tell me that Scott Boris didn't take an L this offseason because the money that was handed out around baseball, and I have the top 10 guaranteed contracts in baseball this offseason that were given out. And there's a theme here. And the theme is maybe not necessarily the amount of money, but the theme is the investment in that player. So Shohei Otani obviously signed the biggest contract over the offseason. 10 years, $700 million, 680 of it 
I guess, um, deferred. So he's not a Boris client. So there you got 10 years. Yoshinobu Yamamoto, 12 years, $325 million. So that's 22 years worth of contract right there. Aaron Nola, seven years, $172 million, which is a lot, but he deserves it. So that's 29 years worth of contract. And then you have Blake Snell, Cody Bellinger, Jordan Montgomery. We'll come back to that. Sonny Gray is the seventh highest paid free agent from the offseason with uh, three years and $75 million. So that's 32 years. Matt Chapman is next. We'll come back to him. Josh Hader, five years, $95 million. So that's 22 plus seven is 29 plus three is 32 plus five. That's 37 years worth of contracts in the top 10 given out over the offseason. And here's the Scott Boris guys. And we, we know that Scott Boris is always the guy who gets the biggest contract. He gets the, the best deal for his guys. But this is what I'm noticing. There's only one outlier. But this is what I'm noticing about the way teams dealt with Scott Boris' clients this, this offseason. And that would be, we're not going to take the bait and pay your guy $200 million for, for 10 years. And then he's going to be awful in eight in like five of those years. So we're just stuck with dead weight for another five years. Teams that dealt with the top Scott Boris clients, Blake Snell, Cody Bellinger, and Jordan Montgomery, they did not give out the long-term deals. And there's no way to actually prove whether or not there were teams conspiring against Scott Boris. But when you look at it and you see over 30 years of contracts given out, and then with uh, Scott Boris clients, you got Blake Snell two years, Cody Bellinger, three years, Jordan Montgomery, one year. So that's six Matt Chapman, three years, but it's basically a one year deal. We'll say the three years. So that's nine. And then uh, Lee for San Francisco, he ended up getting uh, six years, which is a lot. And he also like, he was one of the first dominoes to drop back whenever he signed with the giants. And we were all stunned at six years, $113 million for Lee without even playing a game in Major League Baseball yet. He's had a decent spring, but still, everybody thought Scott Boris was just going to be cleaning up all offseason, but I don't think that's the case. He did not get the guys the long-term contracts that they wanted. His job is to get what his guys want, and in in the past, he has got what his guys want, but this year, he did not, and he is going to be back at the negotiating table with these guys in a couple years, Jordan Montgomery after this year, Matt Chapman, maybe after this year, Blake Snell, maybe after this year. But when you look at the other guys, I mean, it's, it's apparent to me that there was something going on here. It is apparent to me, Sonny Gray, three years, $75 million. He's got a hamstring injury. It's a tough pill to swallow. If you're the St. Louis Cardinals, very tough pill to swallow. Thank you. Welsh Friar. It's 2 AM over there. And he is saying good night to everyone. Thank you for that. Uh, we still have my daily gripe to go. But if you have any uh, crazy predictions about the Padre season and what you might see or what you want to see, please uh, let me know on Twitter or the YouTube chat, 97.3 The Fan. It's going to be one of, uh, it's going to be an insane day tomorrow for San Diego sports. It's going to be, so. it's going to be one of those days where, it's just going to be a uh, whole. <laughs> I don't want to say a depressing day because that would be if they both lost. But with San Diego State playing later in the day, and you got the Padres playing at one ten, there's so much going on in San Diego sports that you're not going to have to go anywhere else. We're going to have all the coverage for you here on ninety seven three The Fan, and I'm going to be at the game. If again you see me walking around aimlessly like I tend to do. Please uh, stop me and say hello if you would like to. Someone told me that they were nervous about saying hi to me when I was doing the when we went down for the uh, first Korea game at Seven Mile Casino. And I just want to say, don't be nervous at all, because I am the most awkward human being on Earth. And it is uh, uncomfortable and you will leave with a story, most likely. I don't want to pump myself up too much, but I'm awkward. Uh the, the chat right now is going through a lot of lineup talks. I can't do the lineup talk anymore. I'm sorry. I can't do it anymore. The, the season's about to start tomorrow. We've talked about the lineup so many times, and I'm not getting mad at the chat for wanting to talk the lineup. I mean, we're here. We're talking Padres baseball. But I need to see things happen now. 
And I, I just don't want to, as Tony said earlier, fake games, man, I'm over it too, Tony. I am over it too. Trevor is oh not going to the game. Emma Key is going to the game. Anthony Sandoval says, wish I could go, but the pup is going to need a lot of attention for a while. Apparently, I think Anthony's dog had surgery on their teeth, on, on the dog's teeth, and the dog is doing okay. And I'm glad to hear that, but sorry you can't go to the game. Uh, Gefelta Fish says, Snelling going to arrive by June, July, August, maybe? Uh, Robbie Snelling, from what I heard, it's going to be... I mean, he could make his debut this year, but I, I don't know that they're going to rush him into anything. He was good, but I feel like they can make do without him for now. So we may see it later. We may see it later in the year. Elisa says, Scraby just said, don't talk about it, be about it. I don't know. I don't know. Did I say that? I guess I said that because I'm tired of talking about the lineup and I'm tired of talking about the batting order. Again, this is not a knock on anyone out there who does want to talk about the batting order, who does want to talk about the lineup. But tomorrow we know what we're going to get. We know what we're going to get for the first week of the season. The next real question for me on the roster is, is when does Manny go back to third? And what happens to the DH spot when Manny does go back to third? Is it just going to be Tyler Wade switching spots with him? And my other questions are, is Jackson Merrill going to handle a full season of baseball? It's a lot of games. They, it's, it's, it's a whole different world when you go from minor league baseball into major league baseball. And I'm not just talking about skill level. I'm talking about the amount of time you're spending at a baseball field every single day. And they spend lots of time on buses when they're going through the minor league system. But I, uh, I don't think people are ready. I think I asked Steven Wilson one time, you're a pitcher, you're on the road. What do you do when you, when you just have nothing to do when you're not going to be at the game? Cause the game's later that night. What do you do? And he said, he reads a lot of books, but he did have to find a way he said it was weird for him in the beginning when he was trying to find a way to pass the time. He didn't know what to do, and I wouldn't know what to do either, to be honest. I'm not gonna be. I'm. I, I'm not gonna be that guy, reading books. Just kidding. Books are great. I'm not a reader though. Uh, Padre Thompson is another great Scraby show. Thank you so much. All right, we do have a lot of questions about the TV, and I'm not a TV employee. But here's what I understand. If you were, however you watched it last year is the way you're going to watch it this year. That's what I understand. Please do not get my DMs yelling at me about this because I did not make the rules. I did not do the TV deal. I mean, the Padres, I got to say, got kind of stuck in a terrible position. I mean, their, their TV partner backed out in the middle of last year. It was kind of stressful just a little bit. Really stressful, actually. So... If they, if you watched the last year, do that same thing again. Also, go to Padres.com. They got more information. With that said, we are coming up on this. What's annoying Scraby today? Let's find out. It's time for the Daily Gripe. Lisa going to the game. I, uh, I'm i going to be at Rick's, so I hope to see some of you there. I see a lot of people in the chat that are going to the game, so that's awesome. Elisa's actually not going to the game. She's going to Baja Rick's Cantina, so make sure you join us down there. Ben Wood start at 6 a.m. Annie and Nelson take over at 10. They go to 10 to 12. Then you got Sammy Levitt's pregame show. Then you got the game. Then you got the postgame show. Then you got Chris and I until 8 o'clock. Wrapping up Aztecs basketball. Wrapping up Padres baseball. It's going to be good stuff. All right, Daily Gripe. And I don't want to seem like... I'm uh, coming down on anyone, but it's people telling me how to do the show. There are certain reasons we do certain things. It's not just because we're lazy. And I'm not saying that anyone in, you know, listening right now thinks I'm lazy, but I do sometimes get messages about certain things of the show. And I, I've never understood why people think it's okay to just completely say, things that they hate about the show i'm all for 
people giving improvements. I'm all for people giving me feedback on certain things. But sometimes, you know, we're doing something because there's a strategy behind it. And it really does bother me when people tell me how to do my job. Now, again, I'm open to, to uh, discussion. But I don't come to your job and make fun of you. I don't come to your job and say how bad you're doing. It's just weird. Just because I'm on the radio doesn't mean you can be mean to me. I don't know where that came from. That was like me going back to second grade when I was being bullied. I channeled that little part right there. That's why I was like, feel bad for me. All right, everybody. Thank you for joining me tonight. Thank you for sitting here and listening to me talk about why Scott Boris took an L this offseason. All right, that's it. I'm out. Matt Scraby, at Matt Scraby, if you want to follow me on social media. Hope to see some of you at the game tomorrow. I'll talk to you after the game tomorrow with Chris on 97.3 The Fan. Good night, everybody. The best time of the year in San Diego is baseball season, and no one is more excited than...